PC building is back, baby, or it's coming back. It'll be back soon. Stock is on the rise. And once again, I am excited to be excited to put a system together for you guys. So today we're doing an all AMD build inside the new InWin 309 Gaming Edition case. And we're gonna actually play games on the case. That sounds pretty cool. Let's get to it. Simple yet stylish, the Be Quiet Dark Power 12 is everything you need in a high-end power supply. From its 80 plus titanium certification to its fully modular cable design, Be Quiet left no box unchecked, and they even provide you an easy way to boost your overclocking performance with the flip of a switch. Rest easy with Be Quiet's 10 year warranty and enjoy some of the most efficient and reliable power delivery in the industry with the Dark Power 12. Check out the link below to learn more. So if you guys like this kind of PC build content, make sure you get subscribed to the channel at that link down below. Consider following me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs because we do these kinds of videos, I'm gonna say often. We used to do them every week. Now we intersperse some different kinds of content, but we are mainly PC tech, PC building focused channel. And if you like that kind of content, again, make sure you get subscribed. So the star of the show today is undoubtedly Inwin's new 309 Gaming Edition case. Now the 309 has actually been out for a while. It's won all kinds of awards. It's pretty innovative. It's got this light pattern on the front that you could choose to display all kinds of different stuff. However, this time, this case comes with a controller and three games built into the front panel already. So if you guys are tired of playing 4K AAA titles at 144 frames per second, and you just wanna take it back old school and play some really basic and fun games, this case has you covered. But just in case that's not enough for you, we are also putting together a baller system inside of here featuring a couple other in-win parts that they sent over with the case. So let's start with our processor. That's AMD's Ryzen 9 5900X. 12 cores, it's a monster for gaming and it's gonna be awesome in this build with the Gigabyte Aorus X570 Aorus Master Motherboard. Now I've used this a couple times before on the channel. It is one of my favorite X570 boards. It is fully featured, it looks great. It's only ATX, so it's not too big. It's gonna go perfectly in our build. We're gonna pair all that with the XFX Merc 319 RX 6800 XT. This card is enormous, but it looks awesome. And it's a 6800 XT. You guys know the performance of that level of graphics card. And hopefully they are starting to come back into stock and more people will be able to get their hands on them. And then we're gonna round out the build with a four by eight gigabyte kit of DDR4 3600 memory from PNY Accelerate. It's low profile, it's got all the RGB effects. It looks good, performs well, should be totally solid here. We've also got two other products from Inwin. We've got their new P series, P85. This is an 850 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. And then their SR Pro series of coolers. This is also new from Inwin. Their SR36 Pro is a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler with a double pump design, meaning that it has redundancy built in in case one of the pumps happens to fail, the unit will still actually function and should last a long time. So by now you guys are very familiar with almost all of these components. I'm not gonna spend too long on them. Let's get this build together and see how we can play some games on our case.
Okay, well, we are all done with this build. It actually took me a little bit longer than I thought, and that's not because the build process itself actually was problematic. I was having trouble getting the front panel gaming to work, but eventually got it to work, and let me tell you, it's just really fun. Yes, I guess you could qualify it as a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that doesn't take away from anything else in the case, and it's something that looks really cool. Not to mention that you don't have to play games on the front of this case. There are a bunch of different ways that you can configure the front panel lighting to display whatever you want or just cycle randomly. So if you wanna just turn it off, you could turn it off. If you wanna have it rainbow, you could do that. If you wanna play some games, you could do that. And choice is always good. Now, before anybody gets bent out of shape, yes, when I built this, I put the radiator at the bottom of the case. And the only reason that I did that is because I wanted to leave the built-in fans that sync with the lighting effects visible for you guys on that upper attic portion of the case. I am certainly aware of all the research in Gamers Nexus's videos about pump and radiator placement inside of a case. I would not build this like this if it was going to be together long term. It's not. This is a system that we build for the channel. It does come apart pretty quickly, unfortunately. So before you get bent out of shape, just know I'm aware that's not where the radiator should go. Now let's talk about the build itself. In when cases of this style that have this attic and the three fan spacing at the top typically are pretty good for cable management. They have a large area that has nothing in it except to be used for cables. So uh, in addition to the depth that's behind a motherboard tray, which is about an inch, up top is also very empty. Building in this case is pretty easy. The worst part about building an in-win case with this layout, and I've experienced this in the past, is routing all the cabling along the bottom uh, near the motherboard tray because there's no holes down there. The motherboard actually comes all the way down to the bottom of the case, and so you have to route all your cabling from the side and across. Now, in our case, because we had the radiator down there, we could kind of hide some of this wiring, but maybe that's not the case for you. And if that's true, then you're gonna have a whole bunch of cables kind of just out in the open down there. And that's not always the prettiest. As far as gaming performance, actual gaming performance, not front panel gaming performance, this system did really, really well. I tested everything on 1440p and ultra settings, but with this combo of hardware, 4K gaming is easy, especially for a lot of maybe not the very newest titles, but my test suite is pretty challenging. I ran four different games just to capture some thermal and frames per second data. Uh, so Cyberpunk was running in the high 70s to mid 80s, but Cyberpunk fluctuates so much depending on where you are in the map and what you're doing. Sometimes I saw high 60s, sometimes I saw over 100 frames per second, but generally high 70s to mid 80s frames per second. Uh, Metro Exodus ran at 107 frames per second on average. This again is a very challenging title on ultra settings. I also ran Red Dead Redemption 2. I ran the built-in benchmark and it was running really well. The scene that I'm showing you here is over 100 frames per second, but on average it was about 98 frames per second across all the tests. Ran really smooth with no issues. And then also I played a racing game, Dirt 5 which was 120 or about 120 frames per second on average. Now, I'm not sure if you could hear it, but the fans in here are ramping up pretty well. And this was probably one of the biggest issues that I had with this case is that I, despite me trying to control the fans through the motherboard's built-in software and adjusting fan curves, even putting it on silent profile, you get this and the noise that you're hearing is actually mostly from the fans on the radiator and the cooler, so the SR36 Pro fans. Um, I'm not sure if these fans just are inherently loud or if they're biased to run very quickly, but it's all hooked up through one cable. So one cable that's hooked into the motherboard at the CPU fan header, and it's all connected through the pump so I'm not sure if the pump is telling the fans to run faster than they need to. It's crazy loud sometimes, and I'm gonna try to dub it down in post, but I mean, I don't know, I'm sure you could probably still hear it. With that being said though, temperatures were pretty good. Both the CPU and the GPU while gaming 
stay between 55 and 65 degrees almost the entire time. So no issues with thermals at all. And even though the front panel is completely blocked off, in this case, that's not where the air comes from. It comes from the bottom and then out the side. So the fan set up in here is actually pretty good. Airflow was good. Thermals were good. Now let's talk about the games that I was able to play on here. So the Glow X software comes with three built-in games. One of them is Blocks, and that's basically Tetris. I went to play Tetris to film it and ended up playing for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. I haven't played Tetris in a long time. It was a lot of fun and it is actually just Tetris. So the pretty basic controller is perfect for this kind of a game and I had a lot of fun playing it. The second game is called Magi Jump. Uh, that's a jumping strategy kind of game. Uh, again, obviously the graphics are super basic, but you are a four block square and your goal is to jump platform to platform and avoid these red things that are kind of flying around. So I played that for a little bit. That one didn't really do very much for me, but it's cool. It worked pretty well. And the third game is called 309 Racing. It's just a racing game where you're going in a straight line. So you're not like going around curves and stuff, but you have to avoid both other cars and obstacles as they approach you. Uh, like holes in the road and things like that. So played that for a little while too. And all the games, they're, they're so basic and so, I don't know, they're so fun because they are so basic. You know, it's there's nothing special about them. It's not a crazy graphics. It's not supposed to do anything except be a little bit of a time waster. And it certainly succeeds in that. And I think this case is really cool for a number of reasons, but that feature is just, I don't know, where else are you gonna get that? That, that was just really, that would sell me on this case, I think. And not to mention the fact that if you watch back some of the footage of me gaming, the lights on the fans inside of the case that come built in actually change with what's going on on the front panel screen. So the lighting effects actually kind of mimic what's happening on screen, and I thought that was pretty neat. So that is our InWin 309 Gaming Edition build. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Do you like this case? Do you like the hardware we built with? Is the front panel gaming? Is that something that would make you buy this over a different enclosure? Sound off, I wanna hear what you think. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate my longtime viewers and also anybody who's new here to the channel. And if you are, make sure you get subscribed because we do this all the time here on BPS Customs. That's about it. I think I'm done with this video. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.